After my freshman year of college, I got a summer job at a local restaurant in the town I attended school in. I had some issues with my family at the time that I don't really want nor have time to get into. But basically, I didn't want to go back home for the next three months. So, what appealed to me about the job was that the owner offered me to let me stay in a small apartment on the restaurant's second floor. It wasn't the fanciest thing in the world, but I knew it'd have to do. He just had a child, so he needed to upgrade. He moved into a house nearby, leaving the apartment vacant. He had wanted to rent it out, but was paranoid that any potential occupants would steal food from his kitchen or cause damage to his restaurant. So, in exchange for working there, as well as closing up at night, I'd get to have the upstairs apartment and food as needed. I was never paid actual cash, and in retrospect, I'm not sure how legal the whole thing was. But regardless, that was our deal. It was the 70s, so employers could get away with things like that. He even let me keep my tips, at least. I'd been working there for a few weeks when things began to take a turn for the strange. The window by my bed was right above the dumpster out back, and I was relaxing and reading a book. I heard something rummaging through it. I tried to look out the window to make out what it was, but I couldn't see anything past a few feet below me, as there weren't any lights on. My boss always insisted the building be completely dark before closing up shop for the night, as he claimed the lights being on attracted some drunkards that he was acquainted with. According to him, these drunkards would pound on the door and disturb the sleeping neighborhood before vomiting and urinating on the steps, and that it happened three times before. I remember smirking at the thought of my boss kicking himself if he knew what was apparently happening at that moment. I figured chances were that since the lights were off, a homeless dumpster diver used the darkness to conceal himself just so he could sneak into the dumpster and try and get a meal. Basically, there was no winning, lights on or off. Part of me wanted to just ignore the noises and let the presumed dumpster diver have their field day, but I assumed there would be one hell of a mess to clean up if I let them continue to rummage. So I went back downstairs and turned on the back light in an effort to scare them off. Then, tread my way back upstairs to check out the window to see if anybody was there. My plan had worked. The garbage thief took off. However, they left the lid open. I began to wonder if it was never closed in the first place, and if a raccoon had seized the opportunity to jump in. So I went back downstairs and outside, checked for any sight of animals or people, but there were none to be found. I closed the lid and went back inside, shutting off the light and going to sleep unbothered that night. Then. The next night, the same thing happened again. I made sure to double check the garbage lid was closed after cleaning up for the evening, so I knew at this point that the scavenger had to be a person. I was annoyed that the light turning on from last night wasn't enough for a warning for them to stay away. I flicked it back on, and this time, I didn't even bother to take the precaution of going up to my bedroom to see what was going on. Instead, I went to the kitchen to look out the window. There was once again nobody there. I forgot to turn the light back off, and my boss noticed it the following morning. He grilled me about it, to say the least. I told him about the dumpster diver who kept disturbing our garbage. He just grumbled about how many scare tactics would make the drunkards come out and cause even more problems. So, he slapped a padlock onto the garbage can and told me to lock it up at night, as I did with the building itself. So, I did. It wasn't long into the third evening that I hear the jingling of the padlock as the person tried to get in. I smiled, satisfied at my work that this wouldn't be a problem anymore. But then part of me felt bad. If this person was resorting to sorting through restaurant dumpsters every night in order to try and eat, they surely had to be in a very bad situation. It could have easily been me if I hadn't gotten my job. Although I was exhausted from waitressing and running errands all day, I decided to make a gesture and grab some extra food for the hungry person. I didn't turn on the light this time in order not to alarm them. Instead, 
I slowly opened the back door. There, I saw a man leaning over the side of the bin, seemingly searching for another way to open it. I tried to get his attention by calling out the word, Sir? When his head shot up and turned to look at me, I came to an awful discovery that it wasn't a man at all. I had no idea what it was. In fact, it looked almost like a giant ape man thing mixed with a dog. It's bizarre. It had a humanoid body, large and stocky, something you'd expect from a lumberjack. However, its frame was bigger than I'd ever seen on a person. It had no bare skin, only jet black fur, with tufts sticking out from its limbs. Its head looked like that of a dog. No resemblance to a person was found. I gasped. I think I was too shocked to even scream. I dropped the food and dashed back inside, unsure of what to think. At this time, I was struggling with severe mental illness, which was a large part of what was causing the conflict in my family. I began to wonder in that moment if I had schizophrenia, as would anyone else who just saw a thing like that would. A stupid part of me wanted to confirm that it wasn't real, so I opened the door again, and once I looked outside again, both the food and the dog-man thing were gone. And I started to form a headache, so I took an aspirin and went to bed. I woke up the next morning debating whether or not my experience had just been a dream. I decided to tell one of the other staff members about it anyway, just to make conversation. He just shook his head and said things like this was a bad omen and I needed to pray more. It didn't make me feel better, to say the least. On the fourth night, I made sure the dumpster was locked and didn't bring out any additional food for whoever seek to find it. I'd grown pretty used to hearing the clattering of the garbage at this point, so I finally just ignored it and tried to sleep. In a losing battle with convincing myself that the dogman wasn't actually there, I reassured myself that I was just a schizophrenic, and the noises I was hearing were just hallucinations too. I heard the back door shake, and then it was followed by what sounded like a frustrated screech. I could feel the adrenaline begin to pump through me. I knew I needed to call the cops. Still, just to be absolutely sure I wasn't seeing or hearing things, I summoned my wits and went back downstairs, checking out the back window one last time. This dog creature, whatever you want to call it, snapped its head towards me and let out a breath so close to the glass that it steamed up some of it. It then began loudly barking, or what I would call as a bark, and I screamed, jumping backwards, nearly stumbling over a mop that had been left sitting in a bucket. It took one of its claws, which I swore were as big as my face, and scratched against the glass lightly. Then, it did something horrifying. It looked me in the eyes and appeared to smirk. Then it slammed its other claw against it, causing the window to crack. It continued to howl and growl as I scrambled over to the phone on the wall, just so I could call the police. And I was so hysterical that looking back, I'm surprised they even understood what I was saying. After I got off the line, I sprinted back upstairs and plugged my ears, waiting until the cops arrived. I finally received a heavy knocking on my door and the police announced their presence. I opened up. The female officer said she noticed a man in the back wandering around, but by the time she and her partner called him out, he sprinted back into the woods faster than they could keep up. She said that she hoped they spooked him off and that he wouldn't return, but she mentioned something weird, that as soon as they called out to him, he ran away on all fours, and she didn't really say anything after that, but it left a chill down my spine. She recommended installing security cameras and to call them back if anything else happened. I only nodded as I listened to her speak. I didn't feel any safer after they left, just more defeated. I spoke to my boss the following morning about the security camera thing. As I mentioned, there was an intruder who tried to get into the window. Not exactly a lie. He shrugged, said it's happened before and ultimately, the price of getting the system in place would cost more than repairing a broken window or two. He insisted that as long as somebody was there to scare them off, it was fine, that he'd successfully done it before. 
As politely as I could, I reminded him that I was just a tiny 19-year-old girl and not nearly as intimidating as him. He just shrugged and told me to call the cops if it ever happened again. At that point, I almost wished I was living at home, but the terms with my family were so bad that I doubted they'd ever take me back anyway. I was also broke as hell. I couldn't even afford staying anywhere else for the night, and because of my mental health issues, I hadn't made friends during college. I knew I was shit out of luck. So, the fifth evening, I began to leave out food again for this creature, hoping it wouldn't bother me, and maybe if I left out food, it would leave me alone. And it was a massive relief when nothing happened that night. To put it simply, that's how I spent most of my summer that year. This thing was hungry and wanted something to eat, I assume, and I needed to provide it something so it wouldn't take me as a meal instead. At least, this is all just assumptions, of course. I don't really know. Night after night, I kept putting food out in hopes this thing wouldn't come knocking on my window, trying to get in. But the food was bad by the morning, so I just kept throwing it out. And once more, it was never touched at all. So I just stopped doing it altogether, and nothing ever really came of it. Part of me is still a little convinced that I hallucinated at least some of the thing, that my mentally ill brain mistook an intruder for this creature. After we reconciled around five years later, I told my family about it. I've also since told my story to my husband and children. Every single person I spoke to all said they'd never heard of such a thing and that I must have just dreamed it. It wasn't until the internet started becoming a thing that I learned I wasn't alone, and I'm just glad I finally got to say my piece. I would come to later find out that the creature that I witnessed was indeed what's called a dogman and seems to originate from the Michigan-Wisconsin area. I don't know why it was where I was at, or what its purpose was, or why it was trying to get into that dumpster, but all I know is I'm glad I haven't seen it since.